dressed up like Jeff. But ladies and gentlemen, I am the alternate Jeff. Just for tonight. And this week's Harmontown is now in session! Gentlemen, the mayor of Harmontown himself, his honor, Dan Harmon! Hello, thank you very much. Thank you. Very kind of you. It's not really kind, it's, it's de rigueur. It's de rigueur kind to of, applaud when people come out. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? I uh, think those are evil dwarves, right? De rigueur? Yeah. By you know? default, uh, 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 mandatory, or rather uh, uh, perfunctory, uh, huh. part, of, uh, part, of the, part of the process. Hardly perfunctory. Just like evil Having dwarves. Having you out would not be re- perfunctory. Oh, yeah, well, it, it kind of is, though. Is it? Huh? It's, it's a show with me in it. I mean, if it, 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 is, it is perfunctory it is. to bring me out. Well, it's perfunctory for them to applaud. <laughs> Everything's fake. Everything that you ever thought was real is gone. <laughs> That's what you came here for tonight, right? I saw the I saw the line outside. I got the divorce bump. <laughs> Say, I'm not, I'm not. This isn't my first time at the rodeo. I remember when, last time you guys were hanging from the rafters. I'd just been fired. Now, come on, we're always sold out, and you guys are always very supportive, and you always love me. And uh, I, uh, yes, that's the, that is there, there's the there's the the divorce thing. I don't know if I, I mentioned this, Curtis. But you didn't. I I I I'd heard. That. I did mention it to everybody at a show yesterday, and yeah. uh, and so now it's now it's out. Like I I um, yeah. I mean, it's it's. Uh, it's uh, it's good. I mean, as you can probably tell if you follow us on Twitter, it's 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 uh, amicable and mutual. Uh, it really is a simple failure of two people to uh, to live the American dream of monogamy, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or or commitment rather. We didn't fail monogamy. <laughs> I'm not I'm not like a shake from Dubai or something. I I, 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 um, I, I we just we just we just uh, yeah, we're kind of like we were we were living together and we were best friends and we were eating pizza and watching movies and and then uh and then we we're kind of like we could almost do this without being married or and all that kind of stuff are you how many marriages have you had well it's interesting <laughs> it's it, it's interesting you say that because my first marriage ended in divorce in much the same way and we decided ultimately that rather than work on saving the marriage we would work on saving the friendship and today that woman my first wife is in business with my second wife <laughs> and current wife, and she is also the godmother of my daughter. So it, wow. can, it can happen when it's done lovingly. That is either a beautiful story or the revelation that Curtis is a strange uh, David Koresh figure. It's... <laughs> And, I pre- I and her of- cousin, her 13-year-old cousin, is the mother of my next child. <laughs> and we all go to the same gun shows. Uh, it's like, like that Sherlock Holmes troupe of, of ladies that you're hanging out with. Yeah, oh, you've seen that. Huh? See, I know there's crazy shit going on. No, you mentioned, you mentioned that. Yeah. And I never, I never asked enough questions the, about that. The Baker Street Babes. The, yeah, Baker I don't Street even know Babes. what questions to ask. Let you don't need the, to. Yeah. It's better not Let's to. let it be a mystery. Let's yeah. let Curtis just have his mysterious life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we have an exciting show. I have all kinds of shit going on. I mean, I don't want to spoil all of it in advance. I just, like, just run down anything that I would talk about without, without bringing people out. Um, let's see. Um, I don't have anything in here except for notes about, about one of our guest's movies, which uh, was interesting. We'll talk to him about it in a second. But, uh, yeah, there's the divorce thing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I – well, you, you brought up an interesting point when you said, like, saving the friendship. I thought what was interesting was, um, you know, 
it was Aaron made the very smart, like practical decision to after we both like took a lot of space and I wouldn't even call it. I did thinking about it. I was just taking time because the therapist recommended. She's like, well, just don't make this decision hastily don't don't do anything you know just like you you got nothing but time now you guys get married you dumbasses um she talked us into it the 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 but but it was like yeah so just take time and i didn't even know and i walked into a couple's therapy session you know that we had scheduled and and aaron started it by having having made a decision and it was it was it was very very brave and thoughtful, but then everything like spiraled into crazy like shouting and yelling and accusing each other of all of these crimes, you know. And I think the reason that happens is because it's fucking embarrassing and hurtful to admit that that love didn't work somehow. And I think you feel weird about it. You feel bad. You feel like you spilled something. Um, and then you, and then the easy way to, to make it less like that is to get mad at this other person. Like, oh, we must be breaking up because they're an exceptional piece of shit. Um, and so just yelling and yelling and for 20 minutes while the therapist sat there and like, okay, you guys could do this for the other 364 days of the year. Like, do you want to, and then it was kind of this calm sort of settled in. And the final epiphany for both of us was, well, wait a minute. If we really are breaking up, if that's really what we're doing, that we can immediately just start being nice to each other <laughs> because we're both good people that are really nice to strangers all the time and we've only really been mean to each other. Um, and so we... Uh, How long did that, did that take, the, the, the process to get to that point? Three years. No, oh, oh say, uh, you mean to cool down? I don't yeah. know, 20 yeah. minutes, 30 minutes of like just kind of like tattling, you know? Well, you did this, you did that, and you're like this, and you're like that, and... This is why this is happening. It's your fault. No, it's your fault. Like, if you had, like, what's the implication there? If you hadn't done something, we'd be, you know, because that's not a good, that's not a good idea to, yeah. like, be married to somebody that's based on, like, oh, if you had done this thing. It's like, if you had done this butterfly effect thing. It's, like, much better to think as you walk away from somebody that it's not because of some... Mr. Destiny, bad movie, flower you could have brought, or or thing you couldn't have said, uh, didn't say. It's much better to just think that actually, shit, we dodged a bullet before we involved children. Exactly. Um, so now I'm really judgmental of everyone that has kids. <laughs> like, and 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 I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's 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 interesting. And I'm, and by the way, I'm very very I'm very very proud of her. I'll probably start crying if I talk about that. But but um. But I mean, I, I like especially. I feel like, like, you know, if the relationship was toxic, it was definitely toxic because of me, and that toxicity came with a dynamic that was uneven, and the and the uneven dynamic came with a comfort level that was probably difficult for her to, you know, it was very 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 brave and admirable for her to actually be the one to put the dog down you know instead of waiting and 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 like that's i think i think i feel like the moral of the story is like or the 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 irony of it is that we got married and we we were imperfect people that got married maybe for imperfect reasons and because it wasn't working for that reason then we went to couples therapy and said like well how do we make this work and she said well first of all you're both nuts and like I'll start seeing both of you separately which I, of course that's a, w- one way to triple your money as a therapist but <laughs> I do also think that, that that she was right and because because she started seeing Aaron separately and seeing me separately and seeing us both as a couple and we were learning about how couples are supposed to work and how all this stuff works and and I think that I think maybe the unspoken thing the whole time, you know, was that we were both learning. Well, given that this is how this works, and given that given that I, I'm capable of being a normal person alone, like maybe <laughs> we didn't we didn't really look at it until it was like right in front of our face, and then it all happened very quickly. But I, I think that's the nice thing about it is that you don't you don't enter a you don't enter a relationship for flawed reasons. And then leave it because you're more flawed. You leave it because you got better. You leave it because you improved. You, you grew, and and learned stuff. And um, she's a she's 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 great. And I'm I'm friends with 99% of 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 all of my exes. But um, I'll certainly continue to be like really good friends with her because she's one of the funniest people I've ever met. And um, and, um, and 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 and. and 
and, and blibbity blah. Give me my podcast award now. Uh, <clears throat> it's weird. It's, it's weird. The, the, it was weird. The round of applause is weird. I did not. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm saying it's, it sounds weird. It's all weird. If I was watching from an alien planet, I'd be like, "That's weird. It's, it's weird what you're doing. Why did you play that recording of you crying when your cat died?" There's a guy that tweeted at me that he couldn't believe. He's like, mm, "Why did you do that?" And I'm like, "Why the fuck? What did you do? What, oh, I'm so mad at that guy still." Because I'm like, "What did you think I was trying to do? Impress people? I played a I played a recording of me crying. Like it sounds t- horrible." And fake and dumb. And it was like, well, it just seemed kind of weird that you did that. I was wondering why you did it. Well, I did it because you're mama. <laughs> like, well, is, is Fiv dead? No, she's okay, fine. Oh, good. Fiv is great, by the way. That's why you really came. Um, <laughs> you should have said she died. All right. What else do you talk I know that I know there is a... Uh, I don't think I, I think I think I'm going to keep this up my sleeve because it seems like a good uh, a good thing to have up your sleeve, but I... An authentic MC like challenged me to a rap battle on Twitter. Uh, really? Are you, are you here, MC Clarity? Okay. Oh damn! All right. oh. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not being racist when I say he's an authentic MC. <laughs> yes, he's black. I looked at his Instagram, not at his face. I looked and he's got there's flyers like you're you're a pro- yeah I, I, is it safe to call you a professional MC? M- Do, but you, have you ever gotten like some of the door? I've gotten the door. Yeah, professional. No, no, no. Like I mean, I mean, taken like like like. Do they ever do like open MC nights like, like? Have you ever received a dollar for emceeing in any indirect way? Okay, he's trying to dodge the issue. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to take down a professional. The, a legit, a legit MC. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, with, and with him, I'm going to take down uh, racial stereotypes. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, white people. You're welcome, black people. You're welcome, hip hop. You're welcome, Harmontown. You're welcome. You're welcome. I can't. We appreciate it. (laughs) You're welcome. All right. Well, let's let's move on then, because we got a cavalcade of 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 odd wonders tonight. Like it's very starting. Oh, by the way, Curtis Armstrong, our guest controller. So good to have you back. Thank you. An honor as usual. Okay, so there was this thing. It was called it was it was called records. Like before, most of you uh, kind of started listening to stuff. There was like we, 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 there were these chunks of vinyl that I don't even know how they made them, but because uh, they were kind of going out when I was like uh, younger. Um, and uh, there was this uh, there, there's this guy that made this documentary about the rise and fall of the biggest uh, uh, vinyl retailer tur- that ended up becoming also the biggest CD retailer. Tower Records is a fixture of Los Angeles. Started in Sacramento, quickly moved to San Francisco. It just exploded. It was a, it was it's so ubiquitous. Like until I watched this documentary that he made, I wasn't even realizing that it was some, a story that you could follow that had a rise and a fall. But indeed, it did because they just went out of business and and marking the end of an of, a, of an era. Um, this guy is a very talented uh, documentary director. He uh, he's also an actor every once in a while. Um, why don't we uh, talk to him about about one or both, please welcome Colin Hanks. Hello. Hi, Dan. How many? How many? How many divorces are you on? I'm on four. <laughs> if we're including all the different family members. But, so because oh, oh, oh. it affects everybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's well, my parents right. divorce and then my wife's parents divorce and then a couple of uncles, maybe cousin. Did you ever get the it's not your fault divorce talk? Always. That's part of the contract of ha- having a divorce. I think it's it's legally binding. It's yeah, like, okay, you have to tell the kids gonna... it's not your fault, which is the, a child's earliest encounter with the concept of protesting too much. Yes. <laughs> 
So are you going to have like the conversation with the cat or dog? We or... already told Spencer it's his fault. Yeah. Oh. Um, but I get full custody <laughs> <laughs> of both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, but I, I I remember very distinctly riding with my dad in our station wagon and 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 like it, and it was it was really delayed. And I say this with 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 a lot of love for my dad. Like like um, I think he's long since stopped like listening because I'm always like I'm always like casting shit about, you know backward at my parents. Um, the but um, but I just remember like. Because I, I can remember, like, I was, I was, like, looking at a comic book, and I remember my dad trying to, like, awkwardly launch into the it's not your fault talk. Because my, my parents were getting separated. They ended up staying together. Um, but it was just False most- alarm, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> most awkward thing in the world. W- what an interview, Dan. Um, good job. <laughs> well, I would say this. Uh, oh, the, the it's not your fault talk always sort of segue. It, like, no matter how it goes... It's so uncomfortable for the parents that it always segues into two Christmas yeah. conversation. <laughs> and I remember being super uh, uh, like jealous because when I was a kid, I was w- in like my neighborhood. I was the only divorced. Uh, I was the only child of divorce. All my other friends, their parents were married until they all went off to college. And then all the parents divorced, <laughs> which is super fucked up. Yeah. But I remember being super jealous that all their, all, all their, uh, all my friends' uh, parents were still married. And I remember even going so like deep into it. That's like, man, all right, yeah, two Christmases, whatever. But if I was Jewish, I would have gotten sixteen Hanukkahs. That would have been fucking <laughs> badass. Wow. Yeah. That's, That's about the extent of my math humor. Yeah, but I just keep going because every every uh, Jewish kid I've ever talked to, like, they the first thing they lead with is like, "Don't." That's not eight Christmases. <laughs> it's like it's like eight shitty half stockings. <laughs> it's like a it's like a it's, gobot if you're lucky. It's on... like it's like eight it's eight presents from the aunt that clearly does not know you. <laughs> is what it is. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's like like vampire teeth. It's great. <laughs> I guess I guess our people are chosen. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if this is the day we're supposed to prove that, but I feel great. I'm 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 off to school where the last three months have been dedicated to our Lord and Savior. <laughs> In the form of just fucking lavish, like blinking lights, it's like Christ was born. Everyone, here's twenty dollars. Here's a candy cane for breakfast. Um, I'm doing eighty stand up. Uh, I'm doing John Stewart's act. From all when of he was, the stereotypes like, like, are being broken tonight. All of them. <laughs> um, all right. So you made this documentary. It's called. It's called. Uh, what got now? It's, 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 I want to say this too shall pass because it's the Buddhist thing. But it's not that. It's, no, it's all things must. All pass. things must pass. Yes. Um, and there's significance to that that I, I I won't spoil. Although I will say this documentary, this will sound like a lack of endorsement, but really it's the remarkable thing about this documentary. There are no twists in this story. No, you know how all the stores close. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Literally all the, all. And you know all why? The yeah, I mean, they could why. guess why. And and uh, that, that, that okay, this is a place that, that that started right when you know. I mean, they they they, they started selling records, and then 1963 happened. Happens. The Beach Boys become a thing. The Beatles yeah. become a thing. The the single culture goes to an album culture, and this place explodes. And yeah. It, um, the but but yeah, I know that wasn't a question. No. The, a- um, <laughs> and they also can guess that then guess guess what guess why it all ends. But it's it, it, that doesn't make it at all uninteresting to like trace every step of this. Well, no, I mean, and that is actually sort of the first. That was the thing that interested me to uh, to start making it. Is I found out. That this guy Russ Solomon, who founded Tower Records, he started selling used 78s from his father's drugstore in 1939, 41. It's the, the he's a little bit hazy with those dates, but um, that's how he started selling records. And then by the time that Tower Records closed its doors, he had 192 stores around the world. And so that little like factoid got me super supremely interested in just the overall arc of the company. And I got lost in 
the most mundane minutia of Tower Records and all of the little fascinating things from a historical perspective that I, that I find to be really interesting. The fact that, you know, he opens up the first Tower, the true Tower Records in 1960. He spends eight years kind of perfecting it, opening three stores in Sacramento. And then on, uh, basically, he goes into San Francisco to go sleep with some woman who works at his barber shop. <laughs> oh, yeah, that story. Is, is so this interesting. The story is incredible. It's incredible. And he, he totally glides over in the documentary the fact that he's married with a kid. But oh! He doesn't mention that, like, at all, even though we have footage of him with his son talking about how his wife was the bookkeeper at the pharmacy. But anyway... I thought that was such a charming story. It is a charming story, though. <laughs> it is a charming story. He goes to San Francisco has this great night with this lady and then wakes up super hungover and finds this location in San Francisco and decides he wants to open up a Tower Records. He opens up in March of 68, right before San Francisco is invaded by hundreds of thousands of dirty hippies from all over the world. <laughs> and that ends up being the summer of love and it becomes the most popular store in all of San Francisco. Right. And so I found all of these little things like that supremely fascinating. And I think a lot of people who kind of know some of the history of that will can like go into it thinking, oh, it's just going to be a documentary of dates and places and historical context and all that stuff. And, oh, we miss vinyl, da-da-da-da-da. But really what the story is is about Russ and these this group of, you know, people that worked at Tower that ended up working at this place for 30 plus years and really became like a family, as cheesy as that may sound. They became a family and worked together and had a fucking blast going around the world working in the music business. And they get married, they get divorced, they have children, they have so much fun. And then at the end of it, they all have to fire each other. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, that's crazy. It reminded me of like a documentary about about our uh, about Ireland. <laughs> I, it, was, it was like like that whole horrible like the Michael Collins era of like yeah. a, because it turns into it ends up becoming. This <laughs> they had to do more than journey. fire each other. But. No, yeah, but I mean, it ends up becoming this other journey that I don't think many people think of. And we were talking about this earlier. You know, I think. For uh, for a large group of people, relatively our age, I'm looking. Yeah, I think we're all cool. Yeah. Um, I think for people relatively our age, you know, if they were even just a sort of like casual music fan, they would just think of Tower as the place that was everywhere and sold overpriced CDs. Right. Yeah. You mentioned that backstage, and I, I, that 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 because there that is part of the story is that all of a sudden Best Buy, Target, yeah. um, everybody starts being able to sell CDs for ten dollars a CD, which is yeah. how much it costs to you know, buy them and put them out on the shelf. And yeah. they're just like, we don't give a shit. This is the, those little, you, if you buy your Britney Spears here, you'll buy more milk. Um, yeah. the, uh, and then a, the Tower Records across the street is like, we sell our, we have to sell these for $20 or we're going to go out of business. Yeah. And there, it, it's hard to even for me to wrap my head around. And I'm sure that therefore for, for these little, little, little profligate uh, fucks. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was going to say whippersnappers, but that works too. <laughs> is that, is that, is that before the internet, which I can, barely remember now and but uh, it was it was like th imagine you mentioned the hate ashbury movement so imagine like there's no internet the newspaper is filled with lies um uh there there is no you know short of smoke signals or like you know just hanging out in a drum circle or something like yeah. there's there's not really a kind of there's not really a hotbed of like kind of countercultural or or even just straight cultural like 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 check in points, yeah. and to have these giant these giant record stores keep going up, and that's why there ended up being 192 of them, is because everywhere that they were, they were never in they were never in our Wisconsin. They were yeah. never they never they made it to they, they had like 35 of them in Japan yeah. before they had one in New York, but they never and, and it some it almost has to do it almost seems to have to do with that kind of cosmopolitan need at that time because the same technology that ended up killing records in general would also supplant the need for 
I don't know, the equivalent of barn raising among yeah. among people who want to care about something other than what Nixon is telling them or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, No, totally. I mean, like, it, what was really, I found to be super I resent that <laughs> sound. I just, you know. I think Guys, that, Nixon was a bad dude. I think we've established that. <laughs> it's almost famous for it. you don't agree with that when you come in, we've got serious issues. <laughs> uh, no, like, the, the thing that I want to, I mean, there are a lot of things that I, 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 I love about the, the, the overall story with Tower, but the thing that I found to be most insightful and also really inspiring was the fact that, you know, sure, it it ended when there were 192 stores, and and there are a lot of reasons why Tower ended. It's not just the, you know, Aaron Sorkin's simple answer of like, oh, Napster killed it. Do you know what I mean? It's not that at all. And we spend a large portion of the film actually really discussing what it was that yeah. actually killed Tower. Which I found fascinating, not to interrupt you, but that is... Uh, yeah, I mean, well, because that's the thing that I find really interesting, because I always just assume, like everyone else, like, oh, the internet came and it right. just changed everything. And no one could control it at and all. No However, as we all. all know, Apple, which made computers and phones, um, decided to become the music industry. Yeah. They and- made that decision, and Tower at the time had a website, and it's revealed at one point at that exact moment, yeah. their website was on AOL, yeah. and it was like this little like rinky dink website and it was just like they could only be so progressive for so long exactly. you know you can go you can go from LPs to CDs but you can't then also be, have you can't keep juggling those chainsaws no and there's so much new technology that ends up sort of coming up and and tower was one of these places where they really prided themselves on trying it was not a company that was run from the top down it wasn't some it wasn't russ solomon saying here is how you do this stuff go make me rich it was here's the keys to the store stock what you want stock what you think people are going to like uh, Hide decorate the coke it. when the cops come yeah, by. Decorate it however you want. Just don't show up drunk or high. And if you do, then go home. Um, and don't fuck me over. And that was how the company ran. And it worked for 30 years. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it's like a sort of model of the, 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 the souls in that movie who more than one of them does that awesome documentary thing, which is what I go to documentaries for, where they, they, they're talking about something that seems innocuous and then st- their throat catches because they've been th- they, 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 they those souls are uh, they they they're couching it as a cautionary tale. Oh, we put ourselves out of business by not seeing MP3 coming or something like that. The but the the real story is that it was a it was an actual successful demonstration of really non corporate yeah anarchic yeah uh, a, a small business turned to taken to a global. Uh, uh, level yeah. to, with uh, God knows how many employees, inclu- including their newsletter and all this stuff. It was like they never they had one accountant practically the entire time, yeah. and they didn't need to. There is no there's no necessary need to all of a sudden like take your stock public and start no. being beholden to a bunch of things and and, and mutual funds and gibbity booby doo. It was like it was like it was just a bunch of people that couldn't get jobs anywhere else, and they liked selling records, yeah. and uh, and they kept growing and growing and growing that way, and they just kept they. they they just kept going and they would go to – they would just constantly always be in that right place at the right time. And as much as they would have the big stores in the – you know, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, eventually New York, and then you'd get into the Chicago's, the New Orleans and stuff like that. They would also have small stores in Stockton <laughs> and sort of those off the beat sort of, you know, off the beaten path type places where not a lot was going on culturally or, you know, the, the places where, you know, the bigger bands would not stop to play. Do you know what I mean? And so they had uh, – they really had a mentality which was – we want to be that place wherever we are where it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you're into. You can come in. You can hang out. And it doesn't even matter if you have money. We will not bother you unless you want to be bothered, um, unless you piss us off. And you can hang out for as long as you want. And if you don't leave with you know a record – that's fine. You know, maybe you'll come back and then the next time you'll buy something. And then maybe when you buy something, maybe you'll be open to hearing what, some of our suggestions and then you'll leave with, you know, 14 different records. Yeah. One thing I thought was interesting about that, by the way, was that I never knew was the um, the album culture plus the CD culture became you 
can't be experimental about your music consuming anymore. Yeah. When you could just pay $3 for a piece of, uh, you know, black plastic that was like, it was like you could, you, you were more incentivized to kind of leave there with a big box full of stuff. Totally. And a good 10% of it, as when you go to the library, might have been like, shit, you might never listened to but then you do listen to it totally. and you're like now I'm into Aretha Franklin or something and then that turns into holy shit I only have so much allowance and Britney Spears doesn't have any singles out on CD well and that ended up being the most fascinating nugget when I asked Russ I said if you had to like blame everything on something else besides what what you did <laughs> I said what would be you know what would it be would it be Napster would it be you know poor management like what what would it be and he actually said the biggest, uh, the, 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 in his opinion, the biggest mistake was they stopped selling singles. Now, if you think about this, and I don't want to get too boring here, but, you know, do you, anyone here remember buying cassette singles? Yes. Yes, okay, right? That's how you started your addiction to buying music. Whether you know it or not, that's how it started. It's just that small little hit first, and then next thing you know, you're going into that store and you're buying maybe more singles, or maybe you're buying the full albums. That, that you know, eventually at some point, it's the full cassettes, full CDs, whatever. Once they stopped selling singles, they lost an entire generation of kids. And I know this because I'm that. Age. I was that age. I remember when they stopped. But you weren't CDs. choosing between going to Tower Records and downloading an MP3. No, but here's the thing. I remember when they stopped selling singles. But at that point, I was like, I love music so much. I'll buy. I'll buy CDs. I'll still. You do just it. couldn't buy as many. I just couldn't buy as many. But I'll still do and it. You had but to be very a... careful about your choices. So you're gonna. Exactly. You're gonna, you're gonna flatten out. But you're gonna lose an entire generation of kids even going into a store. And once you do that, you lose an entire generation of future customers. And that generation of kids all were in college when Napster right. was released. Yeah, they had no loyalty to anything. They had anyway. no loyalty anyways. Um, and, so they, and, also, and I think they're being too hard on themselves. Honestly, I don't think if they had sold singles, I don't think they could have competed with Napster. But I, and I, and no, I, and but I, it's easier to compete of you know, a small single that costs, I don't know, maybe a buck two bucks that's easier to compete with than completely free Log logically technically it's there but i also think that obviously without the actual like i cannot uh, put on pants true um they would have had to have a netflix visionary idea in and addition to that. already having the visionary idea of being tower records yeah i i feel like it's a beautiful like bell curve this beautiful trajectory of like you know all things have to come to an end i mean like you don't want this thing to become disney or no. any other like it's it's like it, it's this beautiful bell curve that lasts an entire generation and traces the evolution of music and it is a bummer and, and in the end the sad it's like well this is how it ends mm -hmm. we it, it never ends really great it's not like a soylent green like euthanasia chamber it's it's like it's like the jaws of capitalism and the loans being defaulted and the people being brought in and having to fire each other and all that stuff but uh let's 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 uh let's bring things to a positive note because uh um um, oh, oh, but there is one more reason to watch this movie uh, if, if, uh, if you get a chance to see it. It's out on Friday, we should, I should mention. Yeah, you... Because I'm realizing yeah. we're talking about a movie that we've seen. None of you have seen this. Right. Oh, yeah, so it's coming out. you can see it on Friday. No, this, is, this, this podcast is big business. It'll be playing at the Arclight in L.A. in the Village East there's a guy. There's a, there's a guy in the movie. You have to watch it alone for the most amazing mustache I've ever seen. Yes. Uh, Mark, Mark Vidicic? Mark Vidicic, yeah. Um, so in normal time, because they're all like old and talking about the memories of it, he's got a regular Sam Elliott. There's yeah. nothing regular about a Sam Elliott mustache, but he's like, <laughs> it's, it's special. Like, okay, it's big. It's a brush, whatever. The, But then they you see him in photographs, and it's like, it, it, I've never Never seen a mustache like this. It looks to me, it, if you just told somebody, yeah, somebody, somebody took, somebody took a, str a duct tape width strip of hair and put it right over his mouth like yeah. a hostage. Yeah, that's what his mustache looks like. It just looks like it just doesn't look. It looks like something happened, like something am, flew across a room and I'm splatted. I'm so glad that you've picked up on Vidicic's mustache because <laughs> we've taken this movie out to a bunch of different film festivals and we always get you know you get super nervous. Like ah. it's funny. I could see. I've sat through horrible, shitty things that I've acted in and been totally fine. Like, no problem. I don't care how, like, it plays. It's just sort of like, ah, whatever. But when it's your movie that you've, like, fucking, like, put everything into, all of a sudden, every noise that you hear while the movie 
is screening is of the utmost importance. And we have these like little moments in the film where I can tell if an audience is with us or if they're just not. And luckily, that mustache <laughs> is the fucking div- like that's the dividing line. Like it really looks like you know what it looks exactly like to me. His mustache in the photographs. Um, being from the Midwest, you make, like the Euro restaurants. There are uh, uh, I, I miss them because it's like they had the rotisserie, and you, you like you just carve off the big greasy strips of jagged lamb meat, just giant long ruler length strips of 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 of, of serrated edge lamb meat, and just lamb in a pita. And like if I don't if I don't ask for anything else, just do that, and I'm just mm, I'm angry at myself. Mm-hmm. Um, just that it looks like a piece of Euro meat, like 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 like. F- was on a ceiling fan after a party and he came in and was like hey guys I have a good idea about a record industry and I just went like and just like went over his lips though like centered on his lips it's that's so... the weird thing about his mustache is it looks like he's like a weird part of a weird freedom of speech like uh, demonstration <laughs> but what's but you gotta understand that it, we, we specifically cut it this way because we have this old photo of him and you see this old photo, and it's basically you just hear his voice saying like, "Oh well, I, you know, I," the, basically describing the first time he walked into Tower Records and got a job. And we see have this old black and white photo, and everyone starts chuckling <laughs> at the mustache, like everybody. Like I've heard people go like, "Oh wow," yeah. like it's yeah. an audible thing, like not just a gasp, but like words as well, like "Oh Jesus." <laughs> Not as detailed as lamb off of a fucking gyro placed on a pita with hummus and the whole thing, but close to it. And then the next shot is him today. Right. And he still has the fucking mustache. Yeah. And then people lose their shit. Right, yeah. They go, oh, he still has it. Yeah, he did. Oh, my God. Well, he kind of refined it, though, because back then it was like, oh, someone ran over a centipede in like... <laughs> And, 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 and I don't know why it ended up on your mouth. Like, why on, your, on the center of your lips? Like, he clearly, like, he clearly since those days had children or wives that said, like, you got to clear out an area. <laughs> it's, it's a, Let it's it a, when I, it's a way I recognize people is two dots and a slit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steven Spielberg uh, definition, like it's a, like a, they just hit the gray alien triangulation. Two dots and a slit, or it's not a person. And, and you got you two dots and a fucking like just euro. Yeah. Uh, anyways, all right. So um, you'll see. You'll see. Uh, I'd like you. And to when meet, you uh, go, please promise me when you see that photo, go. Oh, when you see the black and white photo, and then when you see it out live, I, if you if someone could just go, oh shit, yeah, <laughs> just for my own person, I would love it if someone did that. <laughs> Truly I worth the price of admission. Honestly, just see the mustache. Yeah. Like, you'll love it. Um, the uh, I'm, I'm going to bring out. I, I, I'd like you to stay up here because we, yeah. we, we haven't talked about Fargo. I know you also you have this diversion of. <laughs> oh, thank you. Right. Now that we've fed your PR furnace, <laughs> so already yeah. furnace. I, even, I, I, I haven't seen Fargo, but I'm, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, uh, like, but uh, before we do, I, I, I'd like you to meet my uh, my neighbors. So pumped! Uh, I'm going so p- <laughs> to sit over here, right? Um, no, no. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. If yeah, we're going to do yeah, the Tonight yeah, Show rules. Yeah, yeah. I gotta... do tonight Show style. Okay, yeah, cool. You, that's right. great. Thank you, Colin. That's very classy of you. This, all right, there you go. By the way, no relation. None. No. Okay. Um, the, she, I thought I'd get a bigger laugh. I guess. <laughs> Sometimes your voice, it's like, wow. I know. I know. <laughs> He's, We're uh, talking about Michael Keaton, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, the, um, <laughs> now, I, now I feel bad. I was like, I'm sorry, he was like, Batman. I lo- <laughs> <laughs> he said it. Um, uh, my next two guests, you've, if you're a hardcore Harman, Harmenian, <laughs> um, you, you know... Is that what they're called now, Harmenians? Yeah, well, we because it's, really? it's L.A.-based, so we want to respect the Armenian culture here. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> 
the uh, the 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 you know you've you've met uh, uh, my neighbors before. I I called uh, uh, Beth, my uh, the tumor lady. I had a conversation with her and found out she had survived a golf ball sized tumor and that she was fine now. And I was, I'm endlessly fascinated with this shit because I'm morbidly like like terrified. And um uh and she and her husband came up and her husband didn't say a word uh, even though he's got interesting things about him. But but tonight is not the night for them to have interesting things. Tonight is a, a night. For for me to plumb the depths of their, to me, completely um, uh, baffling obsession with uh, with with four trees in their backyard. The, 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 it's a, I, I, so we're just gonna we're just gonna talk about it. We're neighbors. They 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 have been texting me. Beth has been texting me uh, uh, for a long time about her trees. And 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 she's gonna come out. And we're gonna talk about her fucking trees. <laughs> Please welcome Beth Bootson and Dan Bootson. <laughs> All right. So one day, one day, Dan, we will have on the show just to talk about the really interesting thing uh, of, of like, like the you know, there's no L.A. heritage. There's no su- such thing except Dan's dad was this guy named Gypsy Boots, who you can you can look up on Wikipedia. It was like the he was like the founding father of the health craze, uh, like the the idea of health food, the idea of like yoga and all this stuff, like like the, being being hip being like uh uh married to the uh people that we think are cool it was this guy gypsy boots running around and that's dan's dad who's who now lives next door to me which i think is like that you know those stories don't happen in new york you don't live next to the guy that um you know you probably live next to a a fisherman or a plumber (laughs) it's new york they do stuff there here in LA, you, you you might you live next to like who knows? It's like 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 oh my dad was a, a famous hippie. Yep. All right, I didn't sell that very well. Um, Guys, they story. fish and plum in New York. They don't do that here. <laughs> Continue. All right, so Beth. All right, so it's been uh, it's been a long time. We've been exchanging texts about your trees. All right, so what? Where where do you want to start? I I because I, I among the things I would say I was suggesting that we just read our text. Yes. So um, let's just start from the beginning. Do you do you, do you want to do you want to just start by doing the dialogue of the texts? Um, maybe so. Okay, that's good. Okay. It's like, yeah, it's I, like that love letters play. Well, because right? yeah, 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 it's like love letters. The the um the I guess we, there, there's a little bit of preamble where we just say like well. Well, let oh. me just tell you this. Um, our house um, outside in the back. We have a um, little courtyard, and we have um, the most beautiful, or we had the most beautiful <laughs> um, seven, it looks like seven story, um, 100 year old euc- eucalyptus trees. And these things uh, provided a wall of privacy. From and, our neighbor. From our neighbor. <laughs> and, and they had a beautiful canopy where we hung uh, Moroccan lanterns from, and we would have um, great uh, barbecues out there, which you came to our house for a, yes. um, a wine Yeah. Um, Once. Did you have lamb? And then I came on my show and said, I no, met this tumor no lady. Lamb. No, no, lamb. no lamb. But I swear to God, I, and this, is, this is more about me. This is about me, not about, not about you. Like, <laughs> I never... I never noticed or cared about the trees. Yes, I don't. I didn't this know they true. existed. Uh, apparently, they're gone. Yes. Uh, so, so, so that's the that's my context of like this. Like, well, first of all, I mean, so, 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 for, if it starts with like you're call you're calling me like, and I was a little like, like yes. I was at like, Beth Boots, and I'm like, oh, it's the you know it's my neighbor, and I'm not and picking up the always phone. Always in the middle of something. Uh, then voicemails yeah. and saying like Dan, and you were you were you were inexplicably kind of cryptic about it. You're like yeah, Dan, I have I to did. talk to you about I have something. Something important to tell you. Yeah. I can't. It's like I don't know why you'd bury that I lead. <laughs> but you're gonna tell, and then you're sending me texts and saying like, "Did you get my voicemail? I got to talk to you about something." And I keep I'm in the middle of you know, right. as it turns out, a divorce. But it's like, <laughs> and, 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 and I got a, I got a studio. I'm trying to keep above water, and I, I I'm like like ah, it's neighbors. Okay, I, 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 but I always am thinking in the back of my head, I'm like, oh shit, like I, there must be something like I, like maybe my sewage is coming up into their <laughs> sink or something. What could it be? So so I'm walking, and then I see Dan. He's walking. Right. His dogs, 
And you were well, so yeah. So I was walking, and I, I had to, of course, introduce myself again every time we meet. I hate face blindness. It's fine, I have to. Earphones. To. I was going yeah. to my chiropractor, and I was listening to my podcast. And I, I said, <laughs> I, I said, Dan, you know, my my wife's been trying to reach you. He said, Yes, I know. Oh I, my god! Oh god! What happened? What happened? Yeah. What Did happened? the tumor come back? What yeah. happened? And I said, uh, Right, is it the tumor? I said, No. I said, But it's really, it's it's going to be, it's very upsetting. <laughs> I said, it's the eucalyptus trees are, are rotten, and they're going to have to be removed. And the first thing Dan said was, are they on my property? Had I been a little quicker, I, of course, would have said, why, yes, they uh, I guess are. You could have tricked me into paying for the whole operation. $25,000. So, uh, yeah, I was like, well, so, so then, well, then I... But then, then I said, well, no, no, they're ours, but they're, it's really sad, and they're going to have to take them all out. And he, Dan said, well, they're just trees. <laughs> but that's that's I want I, I don't want you to gloss over what I consider the moral of this story. They're just trees. <laughs> to me, to me, that's to me. I want I just want that to always be in the background. There's beautiful trees, I, beautiful they're, they're trees. They're just they're just trees, and I so I keep being so 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 just 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 all those voicemails, and then the conversation with Dan, and I'm like, oh fuck, Jesus Christ! It was actually a little file in the back of my head, not that I did anything about it, but I was like, oh god, there's a crisis. I'm being I'm being a bad neighbor, and I'm like, fucking trees. What? Okay. I was, like, they're, they're, oh, I was actually charmed because it seemed like your concern was that you were going to wake me up with like chainsaws yeah. and things. So, so and I'm like, oh god, tell her not to. No, no I don't and care. By I don't. The way, I sent this. Um, this letter out to all the neighbors on that uh, app, <laughs> next door app, because I didn't want anybody being furious with me when all these uh, right. old one hundred year old trees are. Oh, 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 oh yeah, you gotta, oh, you gotta eat the. Eat I didn't the mic. want people being furious with Pro me tip. for tip. cutting these hundred year old trees down, four of them, and be, they were the. Um, like if you drive down the block, you just you could see them for from I far, say, far I away. Say, I want to say, Dan, every, but I don't recognize else. his face. So I'm like, else. I don't see the trees. Everyone, everyone, else. everyone else is upset. All right, Except okay. Yeah. Well, you know, th- you th- the their exception. medals are all in the mail. You were the exception to the rule. I, I said, this is this is what it is. I know it's about me. I'm like, I just don't. I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone because I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. So 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 so, so, so September 21st, 4:42 p.m. Now, do you want to? It occurs I'll to me. Do you want to read your part, I'll or should I part. read your part? Yes. Whatever you want. What to are you? Uh, oh, you read your part. Yeah, I'll, you no, read no, my no. part. Yeah, I'll read you your read part, part. Okay. and you read my part. Okay, okay. that'll be funnier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> it is with. <laughs> And I, and you just said like you sent this to everybody, but I don't know. I think I'm just getting this as a tech. And oh, by the way, oh God, there's another there's another important point that I don't know to bring up now or later. That Aaron McGathy is on all of these. It's yes. just a, this is a message to me and my wife who who were struggling to keep our marriage together. <laughs> And Beth, is, uh, Aaron is, she, is Aaron is, is she radio included in it. Yes. Well, yes. yeah, because she is? Yeah, I thought they were can still I read married. Her part? No, no. Well, Aaron, yes, you can. There's only one line at the end. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron nails it at the end. <laughs> can I read that part? Maybe please? you yes. should sit here right, or good, hand thank it you. over. Yeah, but oh, I'm so. Oh, pumped. I know. I'll hand it over. But I do want you guys to be prepared for the fact that when I say at the end, I mean like at the end of Roots, the miniseries, like. <laughs> The whole point is that this is to well, me. And here's the thing: sense. is I knew Roots Aaron is, would be. Pun. I knew Aaron would be interested in this. You were I knew, so wrong. You I knew so you wrong. might not, but I knew Aaron would. Okay, so well, I absolutely. Right. Had I to wish send she it to could, her. I wish she was here right now. I thought you guys oh, were. She's going to okay. be here right now. Right. I will channel her. <laughs> All right. This one line at the very end. Very okay. good. All we're right, going to so, need you. So here we go. Here's the. I mean, You're not but get Beth. The first line. <laughs> it is with much sadness that I write this. <laughs> but our four 100-year-old eucalyptus trees will have to be removed. This is after. So many voice messages and conversations about it. It's like, this is news to nobody. And never was. It's been confirmed by a well respected arborist. <laughs> that although the tre- <laughs> that although the trees look healthy and are th- believe me, but I-, I end up being the bad guy, so it's okay to laugh. 
because she's beautiful. She's caring about trees. Like I end up being the villain, or I wouldn't be taking you through this. It's been it's been confirmed by a well-respected arborist that although the trees look healthy and are thriving on the outside, that they are full of decay in the trunk and roots, and are not expected to withstand a winter of rain and winds. The tree trimmers will begin their tree cutting at 7 a.m. on Tuesday. New paragraph. Trees are located <laughs> at the end of the cul-de-sac on blah, 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 uh, address withheld for stalker purposes, but everybody knows where I live. Your neighbors, the Bootsons. And um, then Dan Harmon wrote back, and he goes, sad to hear about these majestic trees, <laughs> but I do feel you and your family will enjoy a fresh, unobstructed view of my trademark nude sunbathing. <laughs> Something to talk about to all the other neighbors. If I can get a picture, think of all the money I can make. <laughs> make sure you are in a good area and expose all so I can make a lot of money. <laughs> and then the weird thing is you, you left an emoticon. That the, the emoticon is a yellow face going... <laughs> But it's like, wait, that's, that should be my, my emoticon. Um, so, okay, so then it's a, a day later, I think. September 24th, maybe three days later. <clears throat> a photo of our strong, healthy-looking trees that our arborist said would never survive El Nino. And there's, there's yeah. this thing that's like, she keeps sending these pictures. It's the same picture. It's well, like a, Dan a, is going to uh, show, he, we actually brought... Bethan system we brought. Yeah, so well... You can actually see. Right. This is, it's a, tr- well, it's a, tree. it's a, it's a, it was completely soft inside. <laughs> okay, so I am in the minority. That's rotten. Inside, and on the man. outside, it was so green and thriving. I mean, just, it was so lush. You Whose never life believe did we it. save? It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a hollow tree. What saved your life? Why does how that? That would come down on your house. Oh. Well, okay. and my house, and but maybe all the other things. Delicious. <laughs> Yeah, it smells. it's true. They're Eucalyptus has always been my favorite flavored tree. <laughs> can you can you can you see the scroll of the pictures? Because she just keeps sending the same. No, picture. you know why? I did that because I, was, I wasn't trying to make a point. I did that because I was in a place where the message wouldn't go through. So I was like, "What's up?" So I kept sending it. So then there's and then and then after that picture, like nine times, then there's a picture of a human hand in a in I guess what is a tree trunk. And then there's like a close-up that just looks, looks like Afghanistan. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and, then, and then there's just pictures of trees, normal, healthy-looking trees, which I don't know. So it's like, wait, we, are we past that part of the story? Well, so yeah. there's, there's like all total, there's 7,000 pictures. And they yeah. keep coming in like, like over and over again. So, that, so then after all of that, so then you say, those photos did not go in the right order. Plus, it wouldn't send the photo of the stump with the lovely hole in it. Yes, it did! 900 times! So I kept trying to send it. That's why you have 100 of the same photo, so you knew! Uh, that's also what happens when your battery is at 2%. I don't know. You should see the view we have from our window now. It makes me want to cry. Oh, here's a line from Aaron. Oh. <laughs> that was nice. Right. I, I know you're doing that because you want it to be over, but it, I actually was mistaken. Aaron's big line comes later. That was a, uh, yeah. No, yeah. It's like it's becoming Othello. It's like oh. this is a big part. Jeez. Um so, so 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 then so then Beth in response to Aaron's awe says, "Is that the best you can do?" <laughs> she's being she's, I thought I was talking to you. She's being, Oh, 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 that's right. In her phone, she can't tell when Aaron's talking when I'm talking. Um also she's kidding. But uh she says, "How about an apology?" And then oh, and then Aaron says, "Oh. Oh. oh. Sorry." <laughs> I thought I was talking Brilliant. to you the whole time. Then Beth sends an emoticon of a, of a, of a yellow person drying their eyes with a handkerchief. <laughs> then sends a, the same fucking circle. <laughs> Is your battery at 4% now? <laughs> so then, and then, and then it, and it, says, it says, hey, good news. We can wave to each other whenever we each, whenever we see each other now, which will be every five minutes. We'll look up to your window, and you look down at ours. Exciting. 
the rainbow and uh, com- completely like becoming conscious of the fact that I haven't responded to you in a while I now I, I, having learned to make animated gifts I now send I, I send the, my standard gif of me lowering my glasses to my nose and I just put the meme caption that's what I call an unhealthy eucalyptus tree <laughs> Because I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know what to do. And then Beth says, more drawn curtains now. And then LOL. And then later says, still laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, you're sent, then you send a photo. There's, a, there's a, something written more, on a board. More photos. There's another photo. There's a photo of the guys who are cutting down the tree. Another of the same photo of the arm and the stump. <laughs> then there's a new photo. There's a new photo of a tree stump, and this one has a pencil jammed into it. I'm and starting to get. And to show how soft the core is. Mm-hmm. You, can you have put to a post all then, of this. Then again, you the have goddamn to post all fucking of this. Book. They were Circle. all like that. Then again, same photo as far as I'm concerned. So then, so then, so then you said, I want you to notice the photo with the pencil in it. That's all soft center that can be pushed in with just a finger. All of the trees, although hard on the top, have been rotten in the lower trunk. <laughs> Does that other eucalyptus tree belong to you? He's got one on his property. He's got one on his property. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine, but some of the neighbors are starting to inquire about the other <laughs> eucalyptus trees. <laughs> I can give you the number to our arborist. <laughs> she might very well give your tree an A+. <laughs> But I don't think that's what you're thinking. (laughs) We had mushrooms growing on the bottom of one of our trees. We also had holes in our tree that she could put a stick into to see how deeply that (laughs) stick would go in. (laughs) That indicated decay inside. (laughs) If nothing else, it might give you peace of mind. It'll give all the neighbors peace of mind, too. (laughs) And then Dan Harmon wrote back, I don't want to high road you, but my peace of mind is a lot fucking harder to come by than that, Bootsin. <laughs> by the way, going through a divorce like this whole time, like so angry and drunk the whole time. We figure. We, like, we, we never figure. sober when I'm texting you. Yeah. Uh, and Beth goes, okay. <laughs> what can I do to help? I have a feeling that you will never have peace of mind. I think you're doing fine. I guess part of what gives me struggle is the quest for independence in a world defined by loneliness. (laughs) In a lot of ways, I guess I'm like a giant eucalyptus tree rotting from the inside. (laughs) (laughs) They love it. They love it. Ah, <laughs> you identify. <laughs> Is that why you wanted to hold on to your eucalyptus tree? <laughs> well, I don't. Besides, that tree didn't get hit with a belt by its parents, and it never was, and it never was able to do anything other than what it's doing. <laughs> yes, but it did get hit with some huge storms in its past. <laughs> As humans, as humans, we are told, unlike trees, that we are in charge of what becomes of us. Their storms are our fault. That tree got to sit there for a hundred years while people got on and off the bus in L.A., expecting things and having things expected of them. In a weird way, Beth, that tree can totally suck my human dick. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have my neighbor's cell phone number. (laughs) Besides, I got hit with a belt by my dad, but, but I remember all the great stuff he did for me, too. He did his best, and he could be quite loving. I think it got more than it deserved, and I hope it burns in fucking tree hell. (laughs) 
are you okay? <laughs> are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs> That's what you say. But what if I push a pencil through you? How soft will you turn out to be? <laughs> oh, I, that's the part they didn't applaud. I was like, oh my God, I've become a fucking maniac. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, that's what, uh, how soft will you turn out to be? Okay. I know what this is about. You're pissed because you don't have your privacy anymore. You think that I made up this whole decaying tree thing just to stalk you. Uh huh. I can see right through you, especially now that all the trees have gone. <laughs> <laughs> days later, I think days later, October 1st, from now on I'm going to yell up to your window and say, Hi, Dan! <laughs> it's my way of saying, it's a beautiful day, don't you think? <laughs> Three days later, Hi, Dan. My Dan and I were thinking of dropping by your podcast today to talk about the eucalyptus trees. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> We can skip to... Uh... Uh, oh, is it, you don't want to go through all the oh, booking whatever information? Wants, whatever you no, want. No, no, it's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're right, you're right. There's a lot of... Uh, you know, yeah, we, we've got to, yeah, we've got to work on a schedule. Yeah. Uh, okay. So how does Wednesday work? So how about, yeah, no, Wednesday's no good. So, That's so, pretty much what uh, all yes, that is. Yesterday, 8.41 a.m. Yes. Hi, Dan. Are we still on tomorrow for your podcast, R.E. Eucalyptus Trees? Uh, Beth. She signed it. So then... <laughs> In case I'm like, who's this? <laughs> <laughs> the woman I uh, threatened to push a pencil through. And then Dan writes, yes, but we don't need to include Aaron in this conversation anymore. We're divorcing. I'm going to connect you to my assistant, Steve Levy, who books the show and makes sure the guests have all the right information. Okay, and then, let's see. Let's His see. email is blah, blah, blah. Can I give him yours? Of course, mine is blah, blah, blah. I thought you two were just living together. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry to hear about the divorce. That's always a difficult thing to go through. Is this that's me, yeah. You okay. you. I mean him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, that's, okay. that's you reading me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. You perceived right. We were just living together. <laughs> that's why it didn't make sense to stay married. I'll give your email to Steve and have him contact you tomorrow. We'll only oh, have... Anyways, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's just not... <laughs> Is this next part Aaron's? Oh, yeah. And then Aaron comes in for the closer here. Yeah, this is the closer. Thank you, Beth. Truth be told, our marriage was fine until the eucalyptus trees came down. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Fucking Wait. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Truth be told, our marriage was fine until the eucalyptus treats came down because it turns out I was just in it for the shade. <laughs> Aaron McGathy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, so you... you want to oh, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Oh. So in the green room, uh, it was a, just, to, just to put a ribbon on this. So, like, I've said, the audience is on your side. They're reacting to the size of the tree, or I don't know, the amount of decay. I still don't understand. How old they are. I never noticed them. I, I live in a world of just uh, uh, dirty underwear but and sadness. But you know what sadness. I think? I actually think that now that that, that wall of eucalyptus trees is down, um, and you've lost your privacy, and you're looking down into our yard... You don't have that wall of privacy anymore, and uh, there's 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 big stumps of ugliness there now. So um, yeah, there's, neighbors shouldn't be separated. And, I had eucalyptus you trees around my heart. But you might have never bought your house if there was no privacy there. I don't know, but well, uh, I don't know about that. Honestly, I looked in the backyard and I was like, oh, so green. And there's a grill. And the eucalyptus trees were there. I, I think if I, yeah, maybe because if I, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll okay. talk about that later. But but well, see, well, anyway, I feel like if I had realized like how many steps there were, I wouldn't have bought the house. So I, obviously, I don't notice things that normal people <laughs> notice. Like the UPS guy's like, "What the fuck, man?" Right, right. And I'm like, "Oh shit, okay." Well, I I, I want to um, tell you that um, you know us. I sent out those same photos to all the neighborhood and people. Um, 
at first were like us, very, very upset that these beautiful trees had to be cut down. But then afterwards, when they saw how much decay there was, they were shocked, and then they were asking about... My tree! <laughs> <laughs> these trees are 100, year old, 100 years old. Well, right before we were um, going to cut the trees down, um, we've had the same tree trimmer for many, many years now, and um, I, wouldn't have had, I wouldn't have had anybody else trim them because he knows the trees. And go ahead. The, I, you know, and it's not that I'm a tree shit lover. Shit is real, yo. When you are no, a homeowner, this shit is important. Right. Well, so and here's don't the thing. fucking judge. <laughs> or I will come in and I will hit you in the head with this fucking microphone. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. It's not that I'm a tree lover or tree hugger. It's just that these were, when I looked out my bedroom window, these trees were right there, and our house is small, and these trees um, were a focal point. So, and we've lived in that house for 20 years. Well, now we're the like small that. house in the shadow of Dan Harmon's palatial uh, His, uh, yeah. stage. <laughs> <laughs> and these, these trees were probably about seven stories high, and they were 100 years old, and now we look up at this. I will I will build a statue to your trees <laughs> and it will spray cranberry juice for the ch- neighborhood's children. Uh, well, the, I just want to so, say okay, that. So you told me in the green room. Oh, what were you going to yes. say? Um, right before we cut the trees oh, down. Oh, boy. Okay, I was, here we go. Yeah. I was, uh, this was a very um, um, upsetting thing to me, but right before we cut the trees down, um, I actually had a service or a, um, gave homage to these trees. And, <clears throat> you're, and, you're, and you said, can I, can, can I please read the poem I read at the service? <laughs> and you're currently, for, for our listeners, you are as broken up as one of these Tower Records people. Like, <laughs> and it's me talking about my divorce. Like You're, you're crying genuine mustache. tears. Beth loves these trees. And I'm a horrible, heartless maniac that cannot fucking, like, <laughs> I cannot see in these colors. And you know what? I do want to say that you identified with the trees. So, <laughs> unwittingly, mind, unwittingly. Yeah. Keep that in mind when I read this poem. Yes. This t- tonight's theme is about, about okay. loss and, yes, uprooting. and. Okay. My trees, blue gum eucalyptus, four of them, so tall, so majestic, I've always been proud that those trees were mine, fighting through the harsh environment, standing tall and proud for over a hundred years. Those trees belong to me. They provided shelter when the sun was beating down and when the winds would show no mercy. Yet, it was after the storm that they were at their most fragrant. It was like walking into a spa, especially after a big rain. The life that existed in them Raccoons, possums, skunks, the chatter of the squirrels that mocked my dog. Why, even the hawks made their home there, a nest built on the strong branches of my eucalyptus trees, a nest holding three large babies and the parents, and I got to see my hawks grow, and I got to see my hawks fly, and I got to see my hawks soar. The cold winters, the hot summers, the powerful winds, nothing can break those trees. And to think that those trees belong to me. And to think that those trees, my trees, will now be gone. But with every end comes a new beginning. With great love, Beth and Tamor. <laughs> someone just someone just called out give her your tree <laughs> if that is His possible if His that's possible tree. biologically or legally you it is your tree <laughs> I don't know where it is on my property is it the thing with the green stuff yeah, the leaves on it. <laughs> there's a million trees back there I, 
That was beautiful, Beth. Thank and I, 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 I probably don't have to acknowledge this, but rather want people to understand that I acknowledge how amazing you are in your capacity to, you know, throw yourself against a horrible, jagged, coal black wall. Of, uh, you know, <laughs> Dan Harmon. And, and, yeah, and 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 just and just and just respond at face value when I'm clearly just in an alcoholic spiral of oh. self-loathing with like, are you all right? <laughs> I, I, I will say she showed me the text and we went yeah. drinking. <laughs> yeah, I was I was not in a good place, yeah. but I, I will say I was in a very funny place, but uh <laughs> I, well, I, I didn't know that you guys were getting divorced. Well, no, I wouldn't. So, I wouldn't. I wouldn't play that card. I knew, I mean, she, there were I knew she was in state. Ireland, and I thought you were missing her. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. I was. Yeah, and my cat started dying, and then I punched a wall, and then oh. yeah, and then it just boy had no idea the 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 spiral that would happen. But uh, um, uh, 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 the tumor's okay. It's always the, the, they the, just keep a close eye on it. But yeah. Yeah, so, how, how often do you have to go back in? By like the way, every I'm, four months. Oh wow! Okay. But they and they thought they saw something growing there for a while, but now they're saying it's not growing and um, everything looks good. Cool, good. Well, the the Bootsons, everybody. Oh yeah, hero, the heroes of of, of a of a Las Feliz fiefdom dominated by the shadow of a new of a of a tree hating overlord. Now, uh, uh, thanks, guys. We'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll have you back soon. I know you're just a marshmallow inside. Uh, <laughs> you, you can push a pencil through me anytime, Beth. <laughs> Thank you, sir. See you soon. All right. So, Colin, what's Fargo about? <laughs> Is it about the city or? It's about eucalyptus trees and death and uh, no uh, Fargo. Um, Do you need any more vodka? By the way, I know you've been on. You've been been running around. (laughs) I'm coming back to this microphone. Oh yeah, yeah. You should do that. The camera likes that better. All right, there we go. Uh, yes, yeah, so Fargo, uh, the first season, uh, which was the season you... You know, the second season starts on Monday. <laughs> and you all know I, I'm not in it, right? Upset about that. that. Don't be upset about it. It's going to be okay. Don't worry. You're going to get through it. No, the second season is actually really great. I've seen the, the first episode. It's fantastic, and all the people that they have in it are great. It's cool. So it's like, it's like um, I don't know, it's like if you wanted to do like the Marvel Universe thing with the Coen brothers. That's what it is. I can't think of a, of a, of a worse idea on paper. <laughs> on paper? I know. On paper. Well, I was like, I can't. And it is truly, like, that could have been some fucking horrible fan fiction, dude. It really could have been. But uh, Noah Hawley, for whatever reason, that dude uh, is on, like, another level. You know, if Paul He's McCartney said there are seven levels, he's on, like, the eighth or maybe the seventh. Um, and he wrote that first season of Fargo, which was really great, that was sort of had a brief connection to the movie, but yet existed in its own right. And this next season is was alluded to multiple times in the first season. And so Lou Solverson who owned the cafe, who um, Carradine played in the first season, he is now played by Patrick Wilson, and it shows his whole experience as um, a sheriff in a completely different town. Um, And it's it's supposedly badass. I've seen the first episode. It's great, and I cannot wait for the second episode. And I've been waiting fucking months for the second episode. Like, I'm <laughs> so upset that I had to wait Noah on the show. I mean, he was, a, he, was a, he, was a, he was a pilot brother when I was doing the pilot for Community. He was doing a pilot for, I can't remember the name of it now. It was like some like... It, it was, was on ABC. It like was called like The Unknowables or so, yeah, yeah, Generation or something, other... Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Ex, ex other people or something. It was other like, people's exes. Yeah. Um, and, and I got together with him for a round of drinks and, and I, as, as we talked about, he's... He's kind of hard to read. Yeah. I don't know if having him on the show will be uh, uh, will make me secure about myself, but I but I think no. But your your your, your guys' verbal knowledge, you will be you guys will be able to communicate in a way. I don't know if anyone else will understand it, but uh, the two of you don't will oversell be able to it. Bond. He I don't know. He could just be like a, a eucalyptus tree. It's just. <laughs> 
dead on the inside? And by that I mean fascinating, uh, uh, as it turns out. Aren't like, all artists dead on the inside and yet fascinating? <laughs> I love when they, they brought the circular stump that they had been sending me pictures of, and everyone went, whoa. And I was like, okay, I'm the monster. <laughs> you really should I've just post, been looking at... You really should post, like, screen grabs of that that conversation though <laughs> because when she came out and she instantly went to her phone and just started scrolling Ugh. through this t- I had no idea what they were going to do and I just hear start scrolling through a very long text <laughs> conversation and I said well this is going to be very interesting because she's clearly not at all interested in what's happening right now and is very interested in this text conversation <laughs> That yeah. was brilliant. Yeah. That was great. Turned out great. Yeah. It had a beginning, a middle, and an end. That's yeah. a fucking story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holy fucking shit. You, everything you do is a fucking story. C- Colin Hanks, I will take that as a, a good thing. It is. It is. It is. I don't know. What it, I is. Know what it is. It is. I meant it as the utmost compliment. Rap battle! <laughs> Excuse me. I, I hope you'll stick around because I'd like to play Shadowrun with you, but yeah. I got no, some business to attend I'm to. Here. Do I need someone's to get coming on the other to town microphone? talking shit? <laughs> An MC, MC Clarity. Are you still? Are you still down? All right, come on here, up, MC good, Clarity, take everybody. Good mic. How you doing? All right. So maybe we'll get to know you so that the battle can be higher stakes. Because so like, sure. like, are you from LA? Um, I'm actually like born in Connecticut, but I was pretty much raised in the Inland Empire, Fontana Rancho. So, yeah, you go. Woo! Hello, other Caucasians, other black guy. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's NT though. <laughs> It's like his dad's like a a, 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 a he's a heart surgeon from Barbados. He's a professor at Virginia Tech, right? Yay, I did it. My dad's a general manager at a Denny's. <laughs> Come over to the Riverside. No, he's the best damn general manager in the world. Like, his entire, like, like restaurant. Like, my dad's my hero. Shout out to John Joseph Barge. So, <laughs> but no, You're like, both from entire, the streets. There's yeah. no arguing that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the main streets of the suburbs. Uh... <laughs> Uh, can, are you young enough to ask how old you are? You seem kind of young, or is it, maybe I shouldn't ask that. Go if you say it. no, if, yeah, well, how old you are you? I guess? Because, I mean, black don't crack. I don't crack, know. So black like don't Highlander. crack, so I would just say, I don't know. You're a kid. I don't know. You seem like a kid. 20-something, 23, 25? I'm 28. 28 years old. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's very young to me. Uh, when, 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 did, when, did, when did you, you're like, a, you're like, so can we call you an amateur MC? I guess I'll be, I mean, I can just say like I'm just I'm just an artist, you know. Like I'm just trying to just live off of my art. So. What is that lifestyle? How does what that work? Because I did stand up when I was a kid. I'm, it's it's not delivery; it's the struggle for sure. Um, like it's just I'm very hungry all the time. I'm frustrated. Every I can look at anything. Thank you, other guy right there. Your eviction notice too, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Just, yeah, that guy's going like this. Out, right? <laughs> no, just so you know. I right? mean, he's playing it off, but the guy's like... No, no, no. I'm well off. Um, no, but it's just frustrating. I'm always hungry and stuff like that. Um, I never have any gas. Um, I, can, I always try to find a story in something. So if I see just like a kid crying about their ice cream, I need to find a social political turmoil about how America is just some one kid crying about their ice cream. I'm actually act- writing a song about... Foot fetishes. So are you, th- <laughs> are, are you thinking in rhymes when you look at that kid? Yeah, sometimes. So you're like, cone, alone. Uh. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> America got boned. Uh, 900 number phone. Yeah, uh, yeah pretty much. Uh, okay, but, but I, I, won't, I won't keep bragging. The... Uh, <laughs> But but I'm more curious. That's that's very interesting. I'm very because I've I've talked talked to like 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 I had dinner with Ben Folds once. Humble brag and I uh, and I, and because and what I find interesting about musicians is that they like I have I have like dialogue in my head all the time. Like 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 it's it, I, I I imagine myself. I don't want to flatter myself or offend anybody who has a legitimate mental illness. But I when you hear about like voices in your head, I always think like. There's got to be like one drop of chemical difference in the brain between like a writer who's good at dialogue and like 
somebody who's setting themselves on fire because they can't stop like the voices in their head because I just like I'm just used to it. It's just one of those like like I just always hear talking, 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 talking. And when people are talking to me, I see their words in front of my face. Blah blah blah. I talked to Ben Folds and I'm like, what is what the fuck are musicians? How does that work? And he said like he can't. He has the same thing, but it's melodies, which is so weird to me because to me melodies are a thing you make up. Like you go down to the ditch and you just like, oh, I need a melody. <laughs> But that's how other people feel about writing, and he feels that way. He's like, I can't stop thinking of this melody. I can't get it out of my head, which I've heard from like Paul McCartney and stuff like that in interviews. You're saying that for in interviews, he said. I, uh, interviews. He said I don't hang in out interviews. With Paul McCartney. You were so quick on the humble brag. <laughs> Thank you. So Colin. quick on the trigger. <laughs> in interviews <laughs> with the Maca. <laughs> with the Pau Maca. <laughs> As he's called in Brazil. <laughs> Colin Hanks is like exhausted. He's been promoting his documentary probably all week and he has to come here and like defend me from I him. Was, I really, he was very quick on the humble brag. Yeah. Yell. I really thank you for doing that. But, but no, the thing, the thing talking that you're about, talking about, the thing you're talking about, that there's a very big difference between crazy and insane. You can deal with a crazy artist because they're constantly focused on whatever it is that their their brain needs to focus on whether it's words or melody whatever they're crazy because they 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 hear melodies all the time whereas insane is just a fucking insane person <laughs> Well, you're always connecting things, but here's the thing. When I listen to like Eminem lyrics, I'm like, this guy must have been born in a generation where it's like, oh, because of hip-hop culture that came before him and because of maybe something in his brain, like he's thinking phonetically because he rhymes shit that I'm like, that didn't rhyme until you made it rhyme. Do you, do you think in rhymes? Do you hear rhymes oh. in your head? That, or, or? I definitely do. Um, I mean, how I usually kind of start like, my, like the process is, Every song I do is a story, so the first thing I do is I just think about what the story is going to be about. So I always have to make sure I have a beginning, a middle, and the end. And I always have to write out. <laughs> I always have to write call out back. the story. That's a callback. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you want to tell story? You're saying, so, what, so taking us back to the kid with the ice cream cone, you're yeah. saying when you look at the kid with the ice cream cone, you're like, I want to do, I want to rap about that. Yeah, yeah, pretty <laughs> so, much. Like if I see like a kid, if I see a kid like 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 say if he drops an ice cream, the first thing I'm thinking about was this kid must have had like my story was he had a shitty day. No one wanted to like pick him for kickball. His graham crackers were too soggy and all this other shit. And all he really fucking wanted was just that chocolate chip ice cream from thrifty. He was so excited to get out the store, and then he tripped on something. He's like, "Fuck," you know what I'm saying? Like my my saving grace, and now I'm gonna destroy my teddy bear because I don't know what else to do. That's pretty much how I'm gonna put my story because I feel like. Um, I feel like there's like a twisted bittersweet thing in anyone's like moral of the story of the day like you can have the greatest day possible but I feel like something about your day is a bittersweet so I always try to make sure I end every note of my song in a bittersweet lyrical funny way so like bittersweet would be an example would be like so he doesn't get any more ice cream but like uh, but he'll, he's gonna lose weight yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like, like the moral of the story is he's not going to be diabetic. You know right. what I'm saying? So I mean, yeah, because his, because his diabetes will come a year later, 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 later. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like that's like the and then, and then it goes into some weird sketch you uh, with, with, with you and your friends in a car. Yeah, it's like smoking a lot of marijuana, yeah. looking Yo, at man, the kid the- who like who said, "Oh shit, your ice cream." As we all have ice cream, we're like, "Aha, we have money. We're adults. We have jobs. We can just buy something else." I can never figure out money, so. how I feel about those comedy sketches that rappers do on really? their albums. Like, I'm not. I'm like, on one hand, I don't want you to stop, but on the other hand, you really need to take a workshop. <laughs> Oh, it is, I, I think this, it is, is, this is insane. This <laughs> all kind of depends. It's one of those things to where it's just like everyone wants to be something that like it's like when you have like movie stars who want to be singers like Jennifer Lopez she did Selena and she was like fuck I have a great voice and she was like I'm going to go ahead and be a singer when you have like actors or if you have like rappers or singers who are like you know what I'm going to go into acting and you go when you're like you know what I'm really not that great of an actor but I'm going to still keep on doing it so it's kind of like the same thing with the skits you know I don't have very funny skits I actually have a very very corny skit with my girlfriend in it where this, where this is about like going on a shopping spree at a uh, swap meet and it's it's so corny and like, like we're still proud of it till this day and stuff like we feel like we're like comedic geniuses when people look at it they're like 
so this is a swap meet skit? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. It's her birthday. It's a $60 shopping spree. She wanted a purse. It was $5 over. Go for it. And that same reaction you guys are, have right now, that's the exact same feeling I get hey, you from never, my mother, my dad, while you, my you friends. You never know when you're going to hit people. the gold mine that is a decaying eucalyptus yeah. tree. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't know what, 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 what the people are going to consider an important story. Uh, <laughs> all right. So when you battle mothers, uh, <laughs> do you do it sitting? Do you do we got I got two I got two beats from our man Zach in the booth we've uh, there's a there's a slower one and a faster one we, like, like like do you want to sit do you want to do you want to be congenial do we need to like move the seats out and like do, you do it face in, each in other? the center <laughs> have you battled ever before yeah. really yeah this, how um, does that work that was the thing I was trying to ask you when I said about the lifestyle like how, how does that work when I was 17 I started I was like I'm going to be a comedian so there was this whole thing going there was open mics and I, I, like it was like this weird woo, um, it was this whole culture but it's like I have no if I was supposed to write a movie about like like, like how, how, what the hell does that look like what do you do you go to a place do you put your hat in the do you name in a hat and then um, they bring you up <laughs> um, I mean you, like, you can do like open mics or something like that um I know when I just started writing, I just started showing people, and I just tried talking to the right people, and I just started doing open mics or different gigs. So if I have a promoter that's saying, hey, I'm doing something in Santa Ana, it's a two-song two set, just go in and do it. And then you but these the venues best. that are doing it publicly, are, these, these are like showcases and stuff? Is it, are people like, are they, is it like a, a, a honky-tonk where they're like, boo you and throw beer bottles? It, it if, depends. I mean, I actually had an experience like that like two weeks ago. I was actually um, off Sunset Boulevard two weeks ago. I was actually a couple blocks away from here. Um, and... I mean, I, I, I'm a very, like, I guess I'm, I'm a very geeky rapper, and so when I go in there, I'm just real confident because, like, you know, I'm lyrically, I'm lyrically awesome. But the whole, the whole, <laughs> I mean, I, gotta, I have to go in there, like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm like, you know, hip-hop Carlton, but, like, I'm really good at rapping. <laughs> 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 My Tom Jones nigga, please. But anyway, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, like, I go in there, I'm all super confident, and there's a whole bunch of gangsters. I go in, I start rapping my stuff, I'm trying to talk to the crowd, and, and all these gangsters are just fucking quiet like all day and so because they're I like was, what's a gobot yeah exactly right and they're like who's aquaman because i mentioned aquaman <laughs> in one of my songs right like i talk about batman and robin like actually getting married and stuff like that you know and so they just weren't feeling that shit at all and so i was like i don't know if they're gonna boo me or shoot me in the face it's so, it's so like it, it really sucks but i mean this is one of those things where you just gotta you have to keep going you know if you believe in a dream you know you just gotta keep going and just do whatever it takes well i'm know? sorry to destroy your dream tonight Night, but. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, we gotta stand up now. But we you know what? Stand up now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, we start. Should we start with the slow one? Let's see if. You start with it. the slow one. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. So, yo. Yo. Is this the slow one? That's very fast. By my 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 so, account. They say in one second. Mm. Okay, they need get ready to die. They need a second before they drop the beat. <laughs> hey guys, straight up, real hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told you have to say that. Right, before I'm clearing you my do head, by the way. Things. I know, I know. I'm sure you. I'm sure you're coming in with a big sack full of pre-written rhymes. No, not at all. Like I'm pretty much. Just I am promising it. you. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking about is don't Fucking rhyme mouth with south. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're ready to go. Here we go. Real hip hop. <laughs> Clear in the head, yo. Yo, it's about that time. About time to, for hip hop. About about quarter to that time. Now it's getting to be the time. Yo, 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 yo. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, east, west, ceiling and floor. I fucked your mama and she asked for more. Just starting with that, it's like a warm up. Okay. Just give me a second. Get ready to die. All right, here we go. Yo, 
Yo. Biggity, 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 biggity. Kitchen, living room, sink. I fucked your mama till she started to stink. I said, take a towel, take a shower, go away. She went home and came back the next day. I said, why are you here again? She said, I've never been fucked so hard since 1910 because, you know, your mama is 103 and that's not old enough for me because I like the wrinkled pussy, so I like your mom. But right about now, I'm going to get a pom-pom and give it to your mama so she can see lead to the team that is my dick um, and my beads, which are my balls. Alright. Yo. Yo. <laughs> Thank you. Yo. Alright. Alright. Yo. You said you fucked my mom, I'm not complaining. All that means is I'm officially Caucasian. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Why are you talking so much shit for? On Christmas, I want a PS4. You my new daddy. Yes, and I want a new caddy. And you have an Iron Man shirt, sir? I need that in custody. The alimony is gonna go ahead and fuck you up pretty bad, but that's okay, don't be sad. All I wanna do is say you're real rad. All my friends said, hey, what's up? I love your Rick and Morty. Yes, I'm lightly sparring. Nigga, you think I'm really serious with this shit? Real sorry. And victory's already expected. I don't know what I'm trying to say. My head is just neglected. Split it. I smoked too much weed and I had too much vodka in my system. All I want to do is just tell someone, hey, go to college, my sister. I'm sorry. I can say I'm kind of nervous. It's okay, though, because my smoke is kind of porous because it's really soft. All of a sudden, I'm hip hop Stu Carlton. I really like the fact that you have this kind of one on the table and you're not offering to nobody. Yes, can I have a shot, though? Please, just pour me a cup. Maybe all the way, though. I'm gonna chug it down. I'm real fucked up. I'm real drunk. Crazy love because my girl is right in the front. I see her right there, and she has a big dairy air. Not like this guy right here. You can't even stare. You can't even see it. It's too flat like the rhymes that he just said. I can't even think about reseeding on this battle. Yes, I'm gonna have you reeling. I'm too sick like HIV. I just go so raw. And you fuck my mom. Good job. You had an STD. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, mom, don't be mad at me. Hopefully, I'll see you with Thanksgiving. Don't put no poison in my drink or my, or my stuffing or my chicken. My birthday, like I can say it's coming. Don't be mad at me. I'm just trying to be famous. Thanks for promoting. Thanks for everyone for listening. I'm pretty sure we can go ahead and do a second round. I don't know. I'm about to go down like my testicles when I'm growing up in middle school. I'm so cool. I think I'm going to stop right here. I'll keep on rambling, but this is STD. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, round two. All right, we're warmed up. We're warmed up. I need more kettle wine. Hold on. All right. I'm not going to say I understood everything. That's okay. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> I don't understand that. How, I, I, I have to make a conscious decision to do that style where you just rhyme for a while, but you rhyme the time with the, you rhyme the words instead of the, on the beat. You don't rhyme with the feet. You, you, like you do, you just rhyme. It's just kind of sporadic. You just, you going just, as soon as you hear a word, you just start rhyming it. I'm like I'm, I don't think I don't think I'm I don't think Oh I'm would you gonna... like to go without a beat? It's actually pretty fun you can kind of make it No but then that's just That's what right. you're yeah. Fuck yeah. that <laughs> real hip hop yeah. Bring the pain Bring the pain Bring the rap pain I Bring the hip hop pain Yo My name is Jan I'm fucking my boat with my hand I don't use my dick anymore because it hasn't got hard since 1944. Cause my balls don't work. And I gave your dad a job cause he's a jerk. And then I licked his ass and I sucked his dick because your dad's looking a little sick. I think he might have leukemia. I'll give him some treatment. I fucked your mama and she said, me meatman. And I was like, what? And she's like, meatman. And I was like, what? She's like, meatman. I'm like, that's not English. She's like, fuck me again. So I fucked your mama again. And then I left the house about a quarter to ten. I got the mail, went to work, and then I came back and I caught your uncle in her crack. I said, Uncle Bob, what are you doing? He said, I'm just looking for postage glue and I'm going to put a stamp on an envelope. I said, man, let's go hunt.
want some antelope. So we went to Africa and on a safari. I fucked your mama so hard she looked like Starry. And she was taking ecstasy at the time, so we had a uh, disco t- 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 time. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, yo. Poisonous vipers in the bush. I fucked your mama in her big ass tush. I, I fell inside and I looked around and I said, Holy shit, it's a new hip hop sound. And the beats are bouncing off of her ass walls. And I think that's about all I got to do is just say, ha, ha, ha. And then your mama's ass does all the ha, 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 ha. So I went up in her throat and I came outside and there was a moat. It was a bunch of milk that she forgot to drink. Because your mama diet stinks. She just lays on her bed and fucking shoots shit that people put in front of her. Snakes. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, keep, keep it going. Like, <laughs> okay. When you hurt a time, it's uh, much like me. Yeah, Yo. 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 Okay. Go. He was talking about my mom. It's not hurting my feelings. After this time, he's going to be really, really. He's in this house. He's really fucking lonely. Like I said before, good luck on your attorney. Yes, and I do want full half custody of everything you have. Including those you can live in the streets. Yes, I even heard the Texas. Man, you were really fucked up. No wonder everyone wants to leave you every time you speak this. I know I'm real fucked up. It's a battle. I don't give a shit. I'm real evil with this shit. My, my producer is hell Satan. Shout out with the shit. I eat King Cardigan. Here we go again. We go around around the clock like clocks. Keep ticking, tick talking. Yes, quit talking about how you give my mom the fucking stocking. There's a dick requirement. When's the last time you seen the tip? Every time you look down, it's all toes. No mo, you just a hoe. And it's pimping up in here, West Hollywood. You a wee ho, whoa ho. Slow down, no mo. Stop with that shit. I'm your man, but you ain't going hard. Your belly, your belly is too big. I can't see nothing that you say it. Every time you see, you always be spraying mediocrity, the form of walking forward. And the theme is you just shaking like you got epilepsy. I'm dropping knowledge. <laughs> I'm dropping knowledge like Michael J. Fox. You get it? He got Parkinson's. I'm real fucked up. Go to my SoundCloud. Get my makes tape. <laughs> it's a random shout out. Yo, I love him and Revenge of the Nerds. I love when you freaking pick your nose all the time. Did you eat it in that one scene? Did you really fuck your nose out? Did you really pick it out? How many ass did you get after a scene when you saw a girl? You were like, hey, I'm that geek. Yo, give me some vagina. <laughs> B-U-S-S-Y. Never? Are you serious? Did they see you? They said, fuck your nerds. Fuck that shit. You're awesome. That's absurd. Shout out. He's a real legend. Shout out to everyone here. You fucking listening. Just get the fucking clapping. Go ahead. Sell some support for this hip hop shit. It's a real fucking battle. Holy shit. I feel like Kanye West, but I don't have a baby. Goddamn. Or a, or a Kardashian with a big fat booty. Or a dad who just went kind of silly. Went opposite. Now she's a fucking mommy. Or a girl. Or a Maphrodite. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, I'm probably just go ahead and just stop it right here. I'm going to quit. Thank you for the drink. Do I have to pay anything? How about it's it? How about go ahead and practice? Go ahead and just keep on writing all day. But it's just real poetic. You're a fucking icon too. And I think it's really cool that you gave me this opportunity to go ahead and say everything that I wanted to say. Yeah, MC Clarity! The winner, I think. Oh, you got it. Yeah, we'll give it to you this time. Thank you, sir. That's that second round. I I heard I, I I could keep I could almost keep up with everything, and it was badass. That was nice. I will be I will be analyzing that shit for a little while. Oh, wow! And then it got really meta and uncomfortable when he was like rapping about my twitching, my uncomfortable twitching. <laughs> And it was like, okay, this solves that theory of like, when are when are these people who freestyle like all the time? Like, how much how much stuff do they have up their sleeve? No, well, I, mo- I was twitching, people... and then he started rapping about the twitching. Yeah, see, if you you give him something, he's gonna work with it because he's an artiste, and that's what artists do. I thought I was the only one with flow. No, I thought everyone else was a, a twitchy charlatan. flow, a twitchy flow. <laughs> Colin, you don't have any uh, rap up your sleeve, do you? you don't, no, I don't. You've never even wanted to try it, did you? No, I'm not a rapper. Hmm. I'm uh. not the rapper. No. That's the other one. MC Hanks, Wham Shanks. I was. No I thanks. was. I was in a. I played bass in a band in college that fancied itself as a live hip hop group, 
d- this is a horrible thing to fancy themselves. <laughs> and we called ourselves the Underlords. Uh-huh. It was such a horrible name for a band. So bad that the guy who was recording our demo labeled us the Overlords. And he said, over, under, doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> it, doesn't, it does not matter. So you were a band first and then said, let's try rapping? That was the Beastie Boys. Thing, I was right? not. They were like a uh, well, uh, no, I just played bass. I was just the quiet bass player. That's the You're rule. like, leave me out of this. I'll yeah. Be, <laughs> you'll I'm need just bass. off to the side playing a bass. <laughs> And uh, on that little demo that we made, the one thing that you cannot hear is the bass. Uh. Um, yeah. So this isn't something you kept? No, I still have it. Oh, you do still Oh, have I it. still have it. It's oh, really excellent. bad. It's really bad. No, you can't listen to any of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure. I'm just going to check my Microsoft OneNote. I got to go to the bathroom real quick. Oh, I'll be right Spencer's back. Spencer's got to make a little poopers. <laughs> oh. There is one thing. He's been sitting here the entire time <laughs> watching all of this. He's a professional. I think we're about to get to his part of the show. <laughs> and he goes, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Doesn't even wait to announce, I got to go. <laughs> and does like just leaves. Uh, There's no permission. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's you know he's it's really gone paid. to his head. Oh, he's 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 doing it for free. So, but he got to executive produce. I would hope he's shitting for free. I mean, if you were charging oh, him, no, that I, would uh, be really bad. I mean, the game mastering. Oh, there's one thing we'll talk until he gets back. Um, the the D- Dave Grohl is in your documentary, and he's because as as as, an, as a person who was I don't know just one of many people that we recognize yes. these days who who grew is in up documentaries thinking that <laughs> yeah. he's in a lot of documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> He made all of his in the time it took to make one. He talks about the fact that the appeal of Tower Records was the snobbery, basically. Yes. Not to put too fine a point on it, but that's... But, and I've always been fascinated with that idea, because I've never... I think I enact a lot of snobbery without realizing I'm doing it, but I've never been patient for it at all. Is that like like, like what what is that? Like like, like the people like the idea that they like to go to record stores and be given a hard time well, or it did back then? Yeah, so like with Grohl, there's a very specific reason why I put Grohl in the documentary because everyone was like when we released the trailer there were some people that were like, "Oh, great. David Grohl's in another documentary about music." Like that <laughs> per the rules. Uh, he just has a he, he has just has a kit he issues documentary about music it's now. just him it's just clips of him saying you have to understand that at the time nobody had heard anything like this <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just it could be about anything True. it's like clip art it could be anything <laughs> but very specifically he actually worked at Tower Records before right. he was in Nirvana he worked at a Tower Records in Washington DC so I specifically went after him because I knew that he worked there and he, uh, he talked a lot about the fact that a lot of the people that uh, that worked at music stores, at record stores, have a, uh, a tendency to be pretty snobbish. They haven't well, wait, been. They I, ha- I, I, I had to tell you, I was, I would, I can't wait to see this because the tower that was here on Sunset Boulevard when I moved here in '83, yeah, which is I think was the year it opened. Uh, it opened in on yeah, Sunset around no, there. No, it opened in the '70s, but it opened on, for you in oh, 1983. No, no, no. 70, that's right. It was a, that, in it, New York. Was, was in New, 1980. Yeah, New York was later. Uh, anyway, but the the reason that I can't wait to see it is because I never encountered that. I never encountered snobbery, and mm. I lived in that Tower Record for years. Oh, I was there constantly. Yeah, and 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 one of the things that I thought was so sorry about the whole thing going south was that there was a social environment there yeah. which everyone has lost yes. as a result of going to MP3s. And yeah, no, like I that. always sort of say that there's, there are two things that are missing now that these stores have a tendency to not really exist. And I'm saying this knowing full well that we're in the back of a comic store where this happens every day. But <laughs> there are two things that, are, that happen. A is there's the social interaction between people at the stores who are going through bins and seeing what the other person is doing, and maybe there's a connection there that can be made, or there's at least some sort of connection being made between the person that is taking the money and the person that is giving the money. The only difference now is that I don't remember what I was doing when I downloaded some song. I, there's no there's no special moment of like, oh man, yeah. I'm about to download yes. this that is going to change my life. Or like, man, I remember where I was when I downloaded this. Yeah. But I remember where I was when I bought an album that meant a great deal to exactly. me. And that is something that is 
uh, somewhat special, at least to me. And so it's notable yeah. to to notice the lack of that, but it's also like I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we could you could say you could say the same thing about making bread or something like like people yeah. people used to have to. Uh, yeah, well, we need a loaf of bread. So I guess I know what I'm doing Wednesday. You know, and, it, and then and then and then once bread started to be made by other people, uh, you know, it's like, oh, we lost Wednesday. When we when 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 it's bread Wednesday. started to get streamlined, we lost our Wednesdays. You know, and it's and, it, and it's true, but it's not necessarily good or bad. It's yeah. it and, and I feel I do I, again. I do feel like like the, in that documentary. I always, I, I often feel this way about documentaries about people that contributed so much to popular culture. They beat up on themselves so much in the third acts. Like they're like, oh, but we could have never known. That was going to be the end of everything. Uh, did you see the Paul Williams documentary? Yeah. yeah. That, that guy is so hard on himself yeah. for being one of the most amazing people for all of everything in the seventies and being one of the most inspiring, interesting people. Yeah. It's like this diminutive guy. That just experimented, kind of like Beth Bootson, with the idea of like, like as I'm, I'm here mocking her, and she's like, "I'm going to be bulletproof. I don't care. Yeah. I'm so at peace with myself. I'm just I, all I care about is is whether you're okay." And so this tiny little guy who was a, a brilliant songwriter and, and 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 like wrote all of these hits, he he all of a sudden he's like he becomes like this amazing celebrity, yeah. and it wasn't because there weren't taller, more handsome people available. It was because people loved him because he was so unflappable and so sincere and yeah it was the 70s so he did a bunch of coke and drank and this the, the, docu- the documentary kind of follows him looking back yeah. on those days and in the end of it i just why i felt like i had to tweet him and go like you're too too hard on yourself man it's like so what you rubbed your nose during the dick cavett show like what the fuck like like <laughs> you were great like, like this and, and he wrote back like yeah but i have to find peace and grace and all this stuff and it's, it, yeah. it's just like no uh, be drunk again with me no 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 i i i don't know what it, it's like you don't want to you don't want to fuck with that shit but i feel like people are too hard on themselves in these documentaries where it's like yeah we did this thing and then like the, what was tower record supposed to do the important thing that i all the, the 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 most important thing that i kept trying to remind myself was the fact that I, I was being interested to tell these people stories. And so when I see things and when I see documentaries and people are being too hard on themselves, I go, no, they should be hard on themselves because it was their lives. This is what they did. For better or for worse, this is what they did. And a lot of times, especially when you get into these scenarios where documentaries are talking about you know, people that dedicated their lives to something – they will spend the rest of their lives wondering what they could have done differently. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we gave the people that worked at Tower a chance to be able to talk about that and to sort of maybe, just maybe give them an opportunity to sort of get them, you know, get that off their chest. And you and captured really powerful moments. What, what, uh, what's your relationship between acting and, I mean, now you're, now you, uh, what does it take to direct a documentary and what, how does that compare to, because you can just show up to a place and have your own trailer and have p- people put makeup on your face and go have yeah, fun. Yeah, that shit's really nice. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's really nice when people are like, hey, be funny and like wear makeup and pretend to be someone else. That's a nice day job to have and I really enjoy doing it and I got a new show now. Um, it's that called I, Hanks a lot. It's called Hanks a lot. <laughs> Super great. Um, no, but I like that is really fun. Hanks but for nothing. Hanks for nothing. <laughs> Hanks for the memories. Um, Boy, but, there's a lot of. They all involve the word thanks, don't they? they? Yeah, yeah. I'm they not pretty being much clever. All do. No. Um, <laughs> But like with the with the documentary thing, it was really uh, something that I started doing because I wasn't working because I couldn't find any acting work, and I'm not a writer. I don't pretend to be a writer. A lot of actors do. Um, and, Ouch. Um, <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> but um, no, basically it was it was a chance for me to do something else creative, and and I needed some sort of outlet, and so this doc proved to be it, and. Since I started making it, I've done a couple of other ones, and I'm not uh, pretending to be a documentary filmmaker. This was just one story that I really wanted to tell, and I w- was lucky enough to. Well, you did swell at it, yeah. So, I, I, uh, it's 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 we'll it's see really. see it on Friday, and then you know. And we and can we can, can talk decide. for the next three hours about certain like 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 the what it is like that a lot. Very he few. finished his shit. We can yeah, play yeah, yeah, a game. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. I want to bring you back, and I want to talk about like this one, this one aspect of your life that you share with a very, very, very tiny minority of people, which is that, which is a legacy and 
how you deal with like wor- that that concept of working your w- of establishing. Are we solo talking about identity. Keaton? Are we talking yes. about Michael? We're, ta- we're talking about your uncle Michael Keaton. Yeah, and 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 and, and, and but but it's a totally different podcast. And I, I, I even I, you, we can talk about that or not talk about that. But I hope you come back because you're a lovely, I'd wonderful person that I <laughs> really like Thanks. hanging out with. I appreciate that. And you're going to play Shadowrun with us now. And yes. Curtis, you get to reprise your role as Dr. Dr. Friend. It is time for Shadowrun. And we've had. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna not be bashful about uh, about soliciting the the aid of a of of someone that presents as female or is feeling yeah. female tonight. Gay, gay can count since you said it that charmingly. <laughs> Who's who, who said that? Okay. Well, it's all right. Get, What's this? What? Let's bring up the you're, does you're gay count guy. You're gonna get one of those. Because does gay count? Dan. Yeah. Which, uh, which I'm, I'm not sure. Let's figure it out. Uh, all right. I'm 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 Dan Harmon. We'll use that for you me. Sure you should be you should be Doctor Friend. And then uh, uh, so Hordegard. I would say, why don't you be Hordegard? You're like a psychic of 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 foreign guy. Okay. I'm a psychic foreign dude. Yeah. Demorid usually plays him. I, I don't know what really how to explain him. Jeff, okay. Jeff, of course, isn't here. Oh. Well. Fuck it's Jeff. It's a real tragedy. <laughs> Jeff isn't here. We'll, oh, yeah, we'll you're be playing, fine. You're, you got Dr. Friend. And the, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll just say that Jeff got lost for a second. And okay. <laughs> Jeff got lost. That's what he yeah. does. How come I can never figure out exactly how many people we need in terms I mean, of headcount? I I don't know. There's got to be a number, right? There's plenty of right answers. That's so, at thing. what point do I uh, reveal that I have uh, no idea what this is or how to do this? Well, do I just wait till never the end? reveal? Yeah, just mo- mo- most of us have been waiting to reveal that for a long t- two long years. Time. All right, guys, shadow uh, run. Uh, wait, does gay count, guy? What's your name? What's your name? What? Oh, uh, uh, Elliot. 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 You're Elliot. more than gay. You're foreign. <laughs> Should he play the foreign? Yes, he should. Switch, you, you switch should. characters. Yeah, we need to switch characters. You want to? Okay. Where, yeah, are, you, where are you from, Elliot? Uh, England. I'm so sorry I'm not a woman. It's really distracting me. Uh, no, <laughs> that's so charmingly British of you. <laughs> Gay funny. is enough, man. <laughs> Combined with British? That's like the it's women are ha- very happy right. right now. Cool. Uh, so yes, Elliot. Positively <laughs> Hugh Grant <laughs> of him. Oh. He's all flustered because there's I, ladies in the front row. Yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I'm in love with Elliot. This is great. Thank God for my divorce. I can explore these avenues now. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know guys. Gay Harry Potter is gonna like. Come, <laughs> yeah, t- 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 take me. Take me to your Quidditch game. All right. <laughs> it's all hack and it's dumb. <laughs> Just trying to get laughs like a desperate, sad, hungry hippo grabbing at marbles. <laughs> Someone laugh at something. Um, all right, so uh, do you think it's. Uh, we can grab, we just grab one more person to play uh, J- 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 Jeff's character? I mean, it's. Spencer doesn't care. He doesn't yeah, care. Like I said, I mean, does anybody, right anybody in the front row want to come up and just really quickly? All right, all right, young lady. There we go. Great. All right. All right. You're playing uh, Jeff's characters, Eve Libertine. You're, uh, I don't know what. Okay. And we never remember. And I don't remember what happened last time, but yep. we're about to find out. Do I have cool. to keep score? Like, uh, seriously. No, no. You just, yeah. You look- we're, right now we're at 2, 4, <laughs> 7, 18. Don't. He's being passive aggressive. That's not Pat. It's not what said passive something about aggression your shits. Is. Come on. I would like him to come back. Hey. I yeah, me too. <laughs> you behave yourself. It's all right. Let's go. No, okay. We we it's fucking shadow it. run. We good. <laughs> that's how all this. Right. We're, that's how all games start, right? You yell is, shadow yeah. run. This one was written by uh, Robert Horn. Robert Horn. He's the guy who's uh, who parents run a uh, Crown and Anchor or that place that we went to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, 
After Love the his work. <laughs> yeah, Ro- Ro- Robert Horn. After the Shadow Runners spent what felt like an unreasonable amount of time on an impromptu quest given to them by Hank, the gang finally opened the musical lock with their newly achieved harmonious melodies. Here they discovered a vast amount of MP3s, after which, after the unsuccessful use of their abilities, were sloppily transported to the back of a stolen van. At this time, Hackeye alerted the gang to his unfortunate mistake that a live stream of the murder they had committed on a future sex offender had been found by local police, giving them 30 seconds to escape. Will the seemingly unprovoked murder of the storage clerk go unanswered? Will his new MP3 access spark a revolution or just draw a bigger crowd? Will the eager eagle ever return with the Johnson's location? That's a callback. <laughs> Find out this week on Shadow Runners. So, you know, I you, you am get so it. So lost right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So fuck it. Yeah, right. get the dude who made the documentary about Tower Records to play the game about MP3s and shit. <laughs> uh, Jesus, that was an aggressive clap. <laughs> <laughs> really approved that thought. Uh, I agree with him. All right, so I don't. You just piled in this ba- van full of MP3s. You're pulling out of the the driver place. And, okay. And, and and cops. Cops are coming. Woo, woo. You're hearing them. You're hearing them coming. Am Fucking I, pigs. Am I driving? Uh, yeah, you're driving. And you're not, you're not even the best driver, so. Hey, I'm driving. Not even the best driver. Hey, the cops are coming. Quick, drive better. <laughs> Away from the cops. <laughs> Please return your tray tables to the blibbity blue boo. All that stuff that you say. <laughs> What a cool van. <laughs> I'm gonna, Where are we going? Uh, uh, go back to, uh, well, first we've got to lose our tail. Okay. Uh, turn left up here. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. I love this game. Infinite possibilities, guys. <laughs> Turn left up here. I turn left up there. <laughs> you, you turn left down the street. You're going down an alleyway. It's really narrow. But down at the other side of the alleyway, it's just a whole nother street that seems to be free of cops. Uh, good, good, good idea. <laughs> Pro move, dude. Good job. Uh, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> it's my first rodeo, but let's... <laughs> Hey, how, how you doing back there, uh, you other two? <laughs> I'm having a smashing time, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you? I'm feeling really insecure of my Americanness. As so, you should. It's all right. We're, none of us are good at, at shadow running. We're, we, 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 you'll get used to it. I, I keep driving. Um, if I feel like I've lost the cops, I'll, I'll go back to the last stand. What's it called? Yeah, the, the Hank's last Hank's stand. Hank's last stand. You do that. You go, you go out to the other street, and this street, there's no cops. You seem to have lost them for the moment. Oh, both. I've got a map. Can that help? Oh, of, yeah. Of Seattle. You, found, you find where you are. There You're, we are. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just gonna let you go. <laughs> where, your where, way. where we are? Where are we? Uh, you're We're in, in the the Barrens. You're about 15 minutes away from uh, Hank's last stand, which I don't think is marked on that map. In, C- <laughs> in Seattle, 2072. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's go to Tacoma. <laughs> <laughs> Said every British tourist ever. <laughs> It's like as their soon Liverpool. as they get to the airport, <laughs> Seattle Tacoma, Seattle Tacoma. Let's go to Tacoma. Stay out of downtown, everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. That's good. Let's. Can we go to Tacoma? Oh, Tacoma's yeah. license plate frame says they don't, they're not a state. They don't have a license plate frame. <laughs> <laughs> says, 
Yeah, you well, can... I was going to say dependent on Europeans a misunderstanding since uh, 1905. All right. You could definitely head to Tacoma. No, no, no. Come on. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> no, we can't go oh, to... Oh, come on. we got to go back to where we get the job. Okay, yeah. We let's gotta, go, we yeah, the let's go there. But where's the... Like, where is that? I've got a map. Where is it? Where's Don't, the last stand? It's, it's not marked on that map. Well, we'll mark it. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. I know. I know. I know. Twenty seventy two Seattle, like the back of my cybernetic hand. <laughs> Come out to the coast. Have a few laughs. <laughs> what? <laughs> you you screech to a halt. Are we at the last end? No. <laughs> well, then I didn't mean to scratch your screech to a halt. Well, <laughs> I'm just turning. Okay. You turn. Are you, are you are you telling us we have to tell you where we where we go? No, tell me you want to go to the bar. I said. I don't think so. All right. Well, those at home can rewind, but I will say again, <laughs> I'd like to go to Hank's Last Stand. You arrive at Hank's Last Stand. <laughs> Hey, any landing you can walk away from, right? I don't know if you noticed, Colin, but my character's based on Bruce Willis. (laughs) I know a bartender. You totally tell from your lack of hair. (laughs) So is there someone in Hank's last stand we need to see? Hank. Oh, my bartender doesn't help. Okay. All right, well, where the fuck's Hank? (laughs) Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, Uh, hey, Hank. Hank. Very well, thank you. That's... (laughs) Look like you have some some hot vehicular merchandise there. We're coming in hot, Hank. <laughs> well, let me let me let you pull into my back garage for safe keepings. I hope this isn't a euphemism <laughs> for something else, but it sounds like a plan. All right, no, it's not this time. Oh, not this time. All right. You pull into his garage, and he's like, "Well, what do you got? What do you guys got for me? A van?" Yeah, we got the. No. You tell him, Bruce. <laughs> we, got, we got the MP3s. We got the MP3s. That's right. We got we got some MP3s. Um, Based on that improvisational uh, mission that started when Paul Shear riffed some shit. <laughs> it's finally over. <laughs> we ended. We yes ended it for six goddamn weeks. <laughs> And I'm not saying he kept us from doing anything remarkable, <laughs> but it's, it's finally a stairway over. to heaven of riffs, yeah. <laughs> comedic riffs. Um, so yeah, we'd like to we'd like to we'd like to offload those, right? We That's wanna, right. We because wanna... it's not just they're not just MP3s, they're bootleg MP3s. <laughs> that nice. means that we did it illegally, <laughs> which makes it worth more. Well, this is going to be worth a lot to me. You know, we're going to have asses and seats and in benches and on stools, all the places you need asses. Well, you know, there's a small matter of price. Let's Eve, talk terms. Uh, Eve, Eve Libertine, you oh, usually do no. the, the, the talking. Am I the... Okay. Yeah. Well, then... Don't worry about any of that shit. I don't know what any of it means. Yeah, Just no. off the top of your I'm head. I'm severely allergic to seafood. Addicted to seafood, if that is uh, <laughs> relevant in any way, shape, or form. You feel uh, sea- seafood withdrawals. Yeah. So maybe I'm not the finance person this time around. Yeah, just, try, just you negotiate. You're the, you're the good negotiator. Uh, what's uh, the sticker price? Uh, <laughs> eight. Let's, let's start with that. I think it's eight. The sticker eight? price on all these is eight. is six. Six. Well, six I, I heard eight, and so I'm I'm saying eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good move. Uh. You drive a hard bargain, but <laughs> eight is how worthy she's shit got right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we talked over each other. My bad. That's not, it happens with me. Sorry. All right, good job, Eve. Good job. That's what, uh, I'm, what I'm good for. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you know? This ragtag group of Shadowrunners finally did a real Shadowrun. 
We saw it through. Why don't we head back into the bar? I don't mean to tell you your business. I don't, I'm not the leader or anything. Uh, I'm we can head go back. back to the pub, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. all right. Well, so let's get to know each other. Sit around, have a drink. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do no, that. No, I don't want this to end. <laughs> I don't care if you guys have work in the morning. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> you guys uh, still enjoying shadow running? <laughs> yeah, when we do it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> Is there? Can we just talk to you some more about anything? Like, 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 like what? Uh, like, 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 like. Oh shit! Look at this stump. Oh, there's a stump. Oh. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> a strange man. I, I, all I want to do is hear you say, "It's a tree herder. It's a shepherd of the forest." It's racist, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's that's fine. We'll end on that note of social equality. Elliot, I didn't even get your name. Coco. All right, Elliot and Coco. Very heroic participation. Colin Hanks, everybody. MC Clarity. And his flow, uh, an easily handed defeat that I will revisit upon him tenfold in a future episode. Zach, the audio maniac, uh, Dustin, our producer in the back, Chris, Chris Baruch, Baruch, uh, our guest comptroller, Curtis Armstrong. Wonderful life partner and best friend Aaron McGathy that will uh, be back soon to suss through all this with us. I, I, I think and, uh, I thank your spirit for being awesome in that text message conversation with our neighbors, the Bootsons. The Bootsons. Spencer Crittenden. We'll see you next Sunday, I believe. Stay podcasty. Did you get any of that? It's a good show! Feral Audio.